Here we are on the 2022 Dream Boat. I wonder, can I win the Dream Boat? Can I, can I, can I get one of these? <laughs> we'll see. Now this is a way cool boat. And the only difference between this boat and the Dream Boat, this one's powered by a, a 250 V6 and the Dream Boat will have a standard 200 on it. But this is a great boat. I have taken this boat offshore a bunch of times. I'll give it two thumbs up. So we're gonna talk about some of the stuff that's on this boat, the 2022 boat, and I'm looking forward to telling you more. The Steiger 23 DV Miami has been around for at least 15 or 20 years from a hull design. But what's different between this one and the original version from 20 years ago is the fact that the layout and the design has morphed into what it is today. It's sort of like Star Trek The Next Generation. Everything that Alan and his design team have learned over the course of the last couple of decades has been manifested in this boat. The 19 degree aft dead rise is deep enough to give you a comfortable ride or in an afternoon chop when you're coming back in to home port, but it's not radical to the point where it adversely impacts your fuel economy. It's sort of like the best compromise of both worlds. With a single 200 or 250 or even a 300, it's gonna give you excellent speed, a great cruising range, and good cruising efficiency in the mid 20s to 30 miles an hour. And the cockpit itself is to die for. It's got one of the biggest cockpits that you're gonna see on a 23 footer anywhere. And it's really something to look at. Let's take a look at the helm, the business end of the Steiger 23 Deep V Miami. There's a lot to like here. One of the first things is a little ditty box that's got three compartments where you can put a lot of the stuff, okay, that you need to have handy, but you don't want it bouncing around. Emergency radio, backup GPS, house keys, telephones, anything. It's a perfect spot to put stuff where it's not gonna get wet, not gonna bounce around, and it's gonna be right where you need it to be whenever that moment is. Another thing here too, if you take a look at this dashboard, this is the new generation dashboard design from Steiger. You can flush mount a 12 inch screen right here and have the big screen happening right in front of you within easy touching distance of your multifunction display. Your engine gauges are here. We talked about this panel before with the second one off to the side. You have a compass here, a Ritchie compass, and a very interesting place for drinks, telephones, or whatever. There's a couple of things I like about the dash. The first thing is my favorite circuit breaker accessory panels. Blue C, just like the Blue C battery switch. Blue C panel over here, Blue C panel over there. These are the most robust panels on the market. They're not the cheapest, but I use these on my boats as well. This is the number one panel to buy if you want to get maximum bang for your buck and get the best stuff on the market. One of the really desirable standard features on the Steiger, besides the six foot four inch headroom, is a grab rail if you're standing up and a bench seat that will seat at least three of your crew and look at that we have a additional fish box that's above the deck that doesn't need a drain okay to get it overboard that measures 52 inches long by 21 inches wide by 21 inches deep I think the next 80 pound tuna that I'm going to see is going in that box with a whole bunch of ice on it This captain's seat right here, I wish I had one of these on my boat. <laughs> this is way cool. It's got, obviously it turns, it's got armrests to go up and down. It's got a bolster so you can stand or sit. It's got a footrest in front of the storage box, which is unique in its own right. This is a perfect spot to keep your safety gear, like PFDs, 
uh, and whatever Coast Guard equipment, flares, signal kits, and everything, right where you need to have them. This is another great feature when you've got a cabin boat that could get hot in the summer. The fact that you have the ability to open a window, get air in, close it, to keep it watertight. And there's one of my favorite labels right there. Made in the USA. What's cool about the cabin on this, on this vessel is that it's got a lift up center hatch that allows very comfortable sitting headroom. So you're not gonna bang your head. Plus, it allows easy egress from the cabin as we're coming out. One of the things that I really love about the 23 Steiger Deep V Miami is the fact that it's not really a walk around. It's a full cabin boat. So you get maximum elbow room down under for an eight and a half foot beam boat. But also because of the layout of the rails, the handrails and the top rail, it's relatively easy to work your way forward like this. So I got the rail supporting me, the back of my, of my legs. Now I've got this handrail here, but once I'm clear, I reach down and I'm good to go to get all the way to the front for anchoring, sunning, working a fish around, or whatever. There's a couple of other things to really like about this boat. Number one, this is a Bomar hatch right here, and it's possible to get into the cabin and come up to the front of the boat this way, through there, in case it's too rough to work your way around the sides. Number two, if you take a look right down there where I'm pointing, okay, you've got 10 inch cleats. So the hardware on this boat is like supersized. It looks like it all came off their 31 and they happened to put it on the 23. That's pretty good value because most guys who are making a 22 or a 23 foot boat are scrimping on the hardware and using the six inch cleats, not the 10 inch cleats. If I didn't talk about one of the most outrageous features on this boat, and that is her cockpit. Let's take a closer look. This cockpit measures 90 inches long. by 85 inches wide, that is huge. You could put a small tribe of people back here for, for cocktails, for wreck fishing, for tuna fishing, for shark fishing, for catching porgies in the bay. This is a Steiger craft. Al Steiger is a fisherman. Okay, the first thing you're gonna see here that I haven't seen on any other boat or actual dedicated uh, I guess compartments, you would call them, made out of starboard, okay, for sinkers. Uh, that's pretty cool. And as you can see, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six standard stainless steel rod holders. And the great thing about these, unlike competitive boats, they drain right on the deck, evacuate the water straight out the back. I can't tell you how many boats I've seen recently at the Miami Boat Show, okay, Half the boats I looked at, their rod holders drained down into the bilge or over foam or into some really funky places. That is definitely no bueno. You want all that water to go out the back. What I like about this big hatch is that it's recessed, so you're not gonna stub a toe on it. That's the first thing. The next thing about this cockpit sole is actually higher in the center, rolls off to port and starboard, rolls the water out and back through very large scuppers to get the cockpit free and clear of any standing water. Eternal cockpit freeboard, 27 inches. And that's just about right. What's really cool about this too is the sinker tray that's underneath can also double as a tow rail 
with a handhold so when you're leadering that 400 pound thresher for a tag and release, you're not going to fall overboard when, he, when heat takes off. The hard top is high. Okay, it's really high. It's the way it should be in order to number one, get six foot four inches of headroom underneath and still have the rods be in a place where you can reach them without jumping up on something. Uh, the benefit of this is that the water is going to come back and over your head as opposed to on competitive designs right in your face. Another benefit of the Steikercraft layout is the fact that it's a single level cockpit sole. On competitive boats, you're stepping down into the cabin with reduced visibility and when you're standing in the back, the water's coming right off the hardtop, right in your face. Yet another one of the design subtleties on the Steiger 23 Deep V Miami is how the covering boards have been positioned to evacuate water. A lot of times, the water spray and, and gnarly seas will come in and wash right into the deck, right into the cockpit sole. There are two little nuances here that won't allow that to happen. Number one is the cap has got a raised ridge that's about an inch higher than the covering board itself. Number two, if you notice, there's a little recess in the line of the cap where the water comes down and rolls right out the side before it gets into the deck. That really works when you're out there in rough stuff. I've got Colin here from Steigercraft. I've got two questions for you, Colin. Sure. Question number one, looks like we have a flush hatch in the cockpit sole, and uh, let's pop it open. Ah, place for a five gallon bucket, and it looks like we have a uh, insulated fish box. What's the size here, Colin? It's about 80 gallons. And how do we get the water out of here? There's a diaphragm pump. So you have a dedicated diaphragm pump to pump it right out. Correct. That's pretty cool. All right, let's close this up. Let's take a look here at the live well. In a perfect spot, right where you're gonna do your fishing. And uh, let's turn this and twist this. And uh, This is cool. So you can stow your aerator right here. And obviously you can put a bunch of you know, lines and ropes and stuff in here. Uh, what's the size of this one, Colin? This is going to be 35 gallons. Very cool. And it's oval shaped. And uh, I'm guessing you could put 15 or 20 bunker in there and they won't get lost or pump into each other. So uh, and that's, once again, this is in the perfect position where you're fishing in the back. You pull one out of here, hook in it, throw it over the side, and wait for that 200 pound bluefin along the beach. Hopefully they'll show up this year. <laughs> All right. There's a couple more things to like about this Steiger. One of them is a dedicated hose. I guess, Colin, what will we call this? Uh, raw water washdown. It, it's raw water washdown, but this is a, a specific stick, for want of a better word, <laughs> okay, where the hose actually coils around it is sort of out of the way but yet ready for immediate deployment. I have rarely seen this on a boat of this size where the hoses are always a pain, where guys are tripping on them, they're in the way, they're in the cockpit. But this is a brilliant design where it's almost like a, a stow rack for your, your coiled saltwater wash down hose. Another thing that's pretty cool about this is the fact that you've got three horizontal rod holders on each side, and what's really great about it, you can lock them in place with a bungee cord that's easily replaceable when it gets too much UV exposure. And you can put a rod in here that's easily seven or eight feet long on each side. Underneath the transom bulkhead are a couple of access hatches. They pull out very easily. And as you can see, they give you an elevated position to keep your batteries where the batteries are not down in the bilge and eminently accessible, which is really a great thing. Okay, if something goes wrong with your electrical system or your connections, you want to have easy access to the batteries, and this is as easy as it gets. You would think with a full transom like this, 
the question you would ask yourself is how do I get to my bilge, my bilge pumps and critical hardware that's down on the center line? Easy answer. Lift up this hatch, which has got a friction hinge. Pop off this hatch, pull it out. Easy as one, two, three. All right, so here we are on the starboard side at the transom. We're gonna pop open this hatch. And essentially we have a mirror image of what we had on the port side with one unique difference. If you take a look here, here's our battery switch and access to the wiring to the, to the aft side of that battery switch. What's interesting is that whenever I'm setting up a twin battery single engine boat, I'll typically use two battery switches. I'll use an on off for the house and bring that into the number two setting and then put the engine on the number one setting. The concept there, you can isolate the batteries manually, charge them when you want to, and this gives you the opportunity to put a second switch right under the four-way, and not every boat gives you the chance to do that. I tell you, I, I like the helm. I like the way she runs. I like the way she rides. She's fast. She planes at slow RPM speeds for the, the V6, and uh, it's got everything that you ever wanted on a boat this size. It's got it from a huge cockpit to oversized cleats and hardware to a helm that's very ergonomic that'll fit a 12 inch screen and it's got comfortable seating, plenty of storage, plenty of fish boxes, plenty of live wells, everything you ever wanted on a boat this size, it's got it.